Hello and welcome to another X-Ray Tech video. Today, we're gonna to be making an API call inside of Zapier. So if you're new to the low-code space and you're not quite sure about these API things, you can see a video explainer about that in the description. But for today, we're gonna to be using Asana as our example. So the principles of this video, making an API call from Zapier, is gonna to apply to every application on Zapier. But in our example today, we'll just be using Asana because it's pretty simple. So the reason that you would want to learn learn and know how to do API calls is when the functionality that you're trying to perform inside of an Asana or any other tool is just not natively supported inside of Zapier. You see, uh, the ability to create your own API call really opens Pandora's box when it comes to the possibilities with these automation tools. So the principles in this video will help you unlock a whole new level of automation for yourself and for your team. So if you've got an Asana account, a Zapier account, and the API docs ready, you're ready to go. So let's get started. For our tutorial today, the trigger really doesn't matter. Uh, we just grabbed a uh, new record inside of our Airtable tutorials base it's really not important for uh, demonstration purposes today, but you just need a trigger, right? So the action that we want to perform, uh, the first thing you'd wanna do is actually look at the available action events for whatever your application is. And we wanna create a new section, but unfortunately Zapier doesn't have native support for creating a new section. So we can't use the Asana app as an action inside of Zapier. Instead, we'll use something called a webhook by Zapier. After you choose a webhook step by Zapier, you have the ability to select a get, post, put, or custom request call. Now, webhooks can get incredibly complicated, but for our purposes, we're just gonna do a simple post call. So we can add post as our action event and continue. So the first question that you're gonna need to answer is the URL. Uh, that you want to basically knock on the door of and say, hey, I have this new command for you. So we're gonna need to refer to the Asana documentation for uh, the correct way to structure the URL and the rest of the API call. Now, just about every modern software has an available API that you could search. So just search whatever your software is, API docs, and it should be right at the top of Google. So once we get to the API docs, we're just gonna search for sections. And when we click on sections, we see all of the abilities that this specific API command allows us to do. So we want to create a new section in a project. And then after we do that, uh, Asana will return to us uh, the, the newly created section. So the parameters that we are looking at is gonna be the project ID and then the body. So we'll have those along with uh, a few other things that we'll, we'll add into it. Um, and usually these API docs have examples. So in our example, we're already making a post call. That's the first part of that. And that URL is what's really important. And notice that in the URL, it sort of has brackets and says project ID. We're gonna be able to get that project ID from the URL of Asana when we just go to the app, right? We open the app, we sign in, that ID is gonna be visible in the URL bar between the zero slash and the slash list. This is a very common way to find IDs. Actually going to the tool and looking at the URL bar, and you can kind of tell what the ID is based off of what page you're on. So in this case, the project ID is very clearly uh, right there in the URL bar. So once we take out that template information, drop in our own uh, numeric code there, now we need to fill the rest of the parameters. So we have our body parameter uh, and we have some other optional parameters. So the first one that we're gonna use is name and we just added that to our Airtable. Um, our Airtable record in our test data. And the project ID is already embedded into the URL, so we don't need to add that as a second parameter. Now, headers are the next thing that's really important. So in order to actually knock on the door and have somebody answer, right, on the Asana API end, uh, we need to have the right authentication. So authentication is going to require an access token or a secret key or something like that that is basically an alphanumeric code that is unique to your application uh, in your user account. 
So it's how anyone can knock on the door of a sauna and they open the right proverbial door, right? It's because you have a unique token that is unique to your account. And the last thing here is that we need to add the word bearer uh, before the token. That's just how the uh, Asana API knows that it's the right type of token um, to be accepted. So let's go ahead and test this. And there it is, the green bar right across the top, the webhook was sent. But most importantly, you actually need to check inside of Asana to make sure that that new section got created. So I hope this video has been helpful. API calls can get pretty technical. So if you have any questions, don't be afraid to throw it in the comments section down below. Always happy to hop in and help you out. So as always, links and resources are in the description down below. Don't forget, keep the flow.